Good evening. <laughs> Welcome to the uh, second in a series of five, if anybody's keeping count, of the uh, spring lecture series. Um, this evening is the, the second overview of Japanese architecture. Um, the first being last week by Mark Tribe, the uh, American point of view. Um, this one is intentionally the Japanese point of view. Um, Richie Miyake is, I think, um, quite unique in presenting this point of view in that he's a product of two cultures, um, being, uh, having been born and, and, and raised and educated uh, in Japan up to a point, and then um, the latter part of his education being in Europe. Um, in, in discussing um, the current scene in Japan and around the world, he's able to remove himself um, emotionally from the Japanese context and look at it from a Western point of view, which is really quite unique. And I think it's quite unique, um, especially um, at a time when um, much of which was discussed last week has to do with the collisions that are uh, preeminent in, in Japan, as they are around the world, but especially in Japan, the collision between tradition and contemporary so traditional and contemporary society. Uh, um, Mr. Miyake is considered one of the leading um, architectural writers and critics uh, in Japan. He not only writes on Japanese architecture, quite a bit of his work is, um, is, his, that has been written is on international uh, design community. His, um, his interests, I think, um, would be akin to those of a, of a cultural anthropologist. Um, he approaches, I think, his work um, with the interest of someone who looks at uh, design as an act of individuals as well as um, the individuals who, who design um, present the value system of a, of a collective society. Um, a brief uh, biography, as he's written it out, which is quite extensive, I'll abbreviate it a bit. Uh, he was born in 1948. Those of you that are trying to compute, he's 37. I always try to do that. Go, shit, let me see, I'm 36. And, um, you can compute the rest. We'll see how quick you do this. In 1972, quick, okay. He graduated from the University of Tokyo with uh, uh, a degree in architecture. In 76, he received a Master of Architecture from the University of Tokyo. Um, the year prior to that, he, had a, he was given a a, a scholarship from the French government, and he entered the Paris Sorbonne and the Ecole Beaux Arts. He, in '76, um, the same year that he received his master in, engin uh, in engineering, which is architecture, in Tokyo, he received um, a doctorate degree from Sorbonne in the history of architecture. In '79, he received a doctorate in history from the Ecole Beaux Arts. He then returned to Japan and received a doctorate in architecture from the University of Tokyo. Uh, yeah, no kidding, I said the same thing when I read this. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is surprising when you read this stuff, you say, my God, I mean, this is enough for like three people. <laughs> but then you realize that it's sort of typically Japanese. You know? um, they don't sleep. You know? <laughs> We have a few working for us in our office. So. Um, let me see, what else has he done? Oh, currently he's a professor of architecture at Shibara Institute of Technology in Tokyo. Uh, he's published quite a bit on, on a variety of, of topics on French architecture, on medieval architecture, um, turn of the century architecture um, in Europe. And he's been a contributor, which has made me f uh, familiar with his writings, uh, to a variety of, uh, of journals, both uh, Japanese and international. He also has curated, <laughs> it keeps going, huh? He's curated uh, a variety of shows. Um, 
this September, there's going to be a show in Los Angeles, which is um, originating at the Walker Arts Center in Minneapolis. It's um, going to be on Tokyo, uh, Form and Spirit, it's called. And he's currently, he just came from Paris. He's uh, currently uh, one of the curators for a show at the Pompidou Center on uh, um, um, the avant-garde of Japan. Uh, with all of that, I give you uh, Richie Miyake. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm, I'm not accustomed to speak in such a big, big, huge audience, especially in English. Uh, uh, frankly speaking, this is the first time to lecture in the United States, so I'm quite a little, a little bit timid to speak. <laughs> but um, uh, today, so, so long as this is the, uh, on the series of the Japanese contemporary architecture, I want to s uh, speak about the especially house design of houses uh, entitled Experiment of Japanese Post-War Houses. And that this subject must be, so long as the post-war Japanese architecture became so, what shall I what shall say, avant-garde in the international field, if you agree, I would like to explain its background and also how it was created and especially in some peculiar Japanese background. And it has been long discussed that the Japanese conception of space and architecture is completely different from the Western ones, and that the Japanese contemporary architecture reflects to a great extent the tradition and traditional and Japanese approach of Japanese people's mentality. I think this is true, but what I'm afraid of, of is the simplification of this subject according to some exotic notion and what we call a Japonism or Japanese attitude toward the Japanese architecture. Since uh, more than a hundred years ago, many Western people, especially architects and historians, have discussed about the characteristics of and quality of Japanese architecture. But I think it is in the last decades that the Japanese contemporary design and architecture came to be really understood and evaluated as it should be. If the process of the cultural development in, in our country is appropriately compared to the Western ones, the architectural history alludes its own stages of development, which is comparatively different from European and American architecture. But what is essential is that the foundation of modern society in Japan exerted a great influence on the formation of Japanese modern architecture, which was initially motivated by other factors than the Western modern movement. The category of avant-garde, for instance, should have been presented different phases from, for instance, Le Corbusier or Miss van der Rohe. And especially in the field of individual houses, it is so characteristic. Now, uh, let me explain several backgrounds of this phenomena before entering each point of Japanese architectural design, especially concerning houses. First, first of all, I have to mention about the, uh, the relation of individual house toward the public exterior space. This is the point which has defined the nature and the characteristic of Japanese architecture. For instance, in the city of Tokyo, which is a very huge city, especially for these hundred years, the separation of public and private space has not worked so well. Of course, in the Japanese cities, including Tokyo, we have the notion of privacy as well as publicness. The public space and the private space was clearly defined at least 100 or 200 years ago. But so long as major cities are concerned, especially so far, 
This notion did not define the space as it does in Europe. The idea of a public square, for instance, although constructed in every part of Japan, does not, does not work, doesn't function so well. And I think the people of Japanese society prefers to withdraw from such a huge void space which they think is quite meaningless. Rather, in the Edo period, which is uh, from six, uh, 16th until the middle of 19th century, and which exceeds the Meiji Restoration period, we can perceive more outstanding hierarchy of spaces from the public to private. For instance, from the street and the big open space, especially to avoid the fire, or to the hidden backside court, the hierarchy was so distinguished. After the Meiji period, that is, after 1868, uh, which marked the new politics of westernization, this hierarchy system was really broken up to confusion. The existing urban organization system was radically destroyed and typology of houses inside the city was obliged to transform drastically. In Edo period, that is a feudal, feudal period, we have the distinction of co collective housing of low and long buildings, which is called machia, that is a townhouse, and big residence of samurai, the dominant class, who had the sword. Uh, and this uh, big residence of samurai was characterized with a surrounding uh, void space and individual building in the center of it. So the big residence that correspond, for instance, a, a hotel in, in French sense, was horribly transformed after Meiji restoration. That is the, that correspond to the, the change of the society because the feudal system was broken so that the, there's no use to have such a big, big territory, big land in, inside of the city. And this one was really a, broken up. And the, the former type, that is the Machia townhouse type, still continued just before the breakup of the World War II. So in Europe, the existing urban organization was already densely built up, and this was not to be destroyed. So uh, still now we can see the uh, system of the medieval system for instance, in Paris or Vienna, that is the transfer system after the middle of 19th century, but still they have the clear system of the medieval, society, medieval urban, urban organization. But in Japan, the existing uh, big residences were completely broken up and totally destroyed, and they were nearly filled up with small units of parcels and little individual houses. Among these smaller individual houses, which was constructed inside a such big, his, big territory, the internal relation between each houses was hardly to be seen, and that was already the nature of the 20th century expansion of urban areas. But in Tokyo, this expansion that should have been toward the, the edge of the city began, first of all, inside the city to replace the old big residence of samurai, and later this exp expansion occurred in the suburban areas. So th and that is the double system of the expansion. Therefore, the city of Tokyo was from th the initial point motivated by the random distribution of smaller, very small uh, unit of houses, as well as the lack of public open spaces. And secondary, we have to refer to the point of the internal space, the interior space. Once the notion of public square was rejected by such a Meiji, Meiji politics, 
the fundamental principle of the urban space came to be oriented toward the internal space, that is, the more domestic, more interior space, even inside the city. As for the exterior space is concerned, we can find small alleys, that is called roji, or well, really small street behind the facade, and compact space around a well. Uh, these were the elements of older Edo collective housing for common people. And such a system of small streets, small alleys, and well space was conserved uh, even in the contemporary architecture and the called contemporary collective housings. So long as it keeps the air and atmosphere of intimacy. And these small alleys present an ambiguous space between public and private, where the communication and the relaxation among people are anticipated. In the public space policy, after major restoration period, such ambiguity was totally neglected. And this finally led to the failure of the reorganization of the public open space, especially in, in the city of Tokyo. On the contrary, the creation of internal space bore rather fruitful result, for instance, to make a new model for interior space, as it had been in the tea houses in the 16th century. So that is a, a kind of a small, small intimate space of the 10 square meters. This interior uh, space marked the presence of Japanese avant-garde architecture in this century, in the 20th century. Even the discussion about the community and square in the 1960s in our country are not able to judge it. Uh, we are not able to judge it successfully because unfortunately it lacked completely the viewpoint of the uh, such a minor spaces as mentioned, and was therefore obliged to withdraw to more detailed discussion about the interior uh, composition of the space. So, we would like to proceed on to the third point. Now, this is the conception of the interior space as a kind of microcosmos. The, the internal space of houses should be regarded as a space to live in. Although Le Corbusier pointed out the house as the machine to live in, the traditional type of houses was clearly defined as a sort of hierarchy, whether it is in Europe or in Japan. But our country, this hierarchy was defined by the social order of high and low, low ranks. The highest rank should be resided at the most profound point, pro profound space, and everything was reorganized according to this order. However, the modern houses in Japan, uh, modern houses in Japan lost completely this notion of order, while they underlined the importance of the internal space against the surrounding exterior space. One tried to realize the uniform uniform interior space, as Ms. van der Rohe did. Another pursued the reflection of uh, human psychological values. Especially, some architects have been strongly inclined toward the symbolic representation of spiritual value inside a house. As tea house is the 16th century was a typical representation of human nature in a form of introverted space. The new type of individual house also marks the same kind of internal space. Even in the exterior space, this notion of a spiritual representation has been requested. After the failure of open community architecture, open community architecture, such architecture in the exterior space has been considered more and more important. And lastly, uh, we have to mention the point about the 
nature of Japanese exterior space as environment. And that is the most, uh, can I say, worst uh, surrounding, worst uh, surrounding from the environmental point of view. In accordance to the collapse of existing order and typology of urban organization, the Japanese major cities, especially after the Meiji period and in the 20th century, have shown a chaotic aspect. Perhaps uh, if you have been to Japan, you have realized that the city of Tokyo was so vague, so ambiguous, and also very, very, uh, uh, what do you say, in a chaotic state. Tokyo is the most outstanding example of this chaotic aspect. I myself define this aspect of chaos of Tokyo as catastrophic notion because the city of Tokyo has experienced so many catastrophes that no other city has ever met with. For instance, the fire, earthquake, war, air raid, internal demolition, renovation, etc. And any kind of change was always accompanied with such a destruction. For instance, the survey of the 19th century, to 19th century Tokyo reveals that every 12 years, the city, city center of Tokyo, or Edo, was destructed by fire, earthquake, etc. And each time, the city center was reconstructed in a new way. Such a short interval of destruction and re reconstruction has, of course, exerted a tremendous influence on the nature of its architecture. <coughs> As an example, the barracks. The barracks is a typical example. By barrack, barracks, we mean the temporary and emergency structure constructed just after the war or fire, and especially in the period of 1922, that is the, the, just after the big earthquake of Kanto in the region of Tokyo, uh, this uh, barrack architecture came in, came out, and was combined with the idea of Dada art, or Dada architecture, which chanced to be in fashion in Europe, and bore a fantastic creation of totally new design in just in the period of 1920s and 30s. Even now, this notion of barracks is one of the most characteristic points of Japanese contemporary house design. So, such are the fundamental backgrounds about the design of Japanese contemporary uh, houses, especially from the social context. The reality of the urban aspect is not at all negligible, at, and even the most sophisticated Japanese architecture design concerns its, the Japanese uh, peculiar phases of urban development in such a way. And I think it's better to show you these examples using the slides uh, one by one, although it's not so well, good pictures. Uh, uh, this is the, uh, the, uh, a house which is situated in the suburbs of Kyoto. And that was constructed in 1932 by the architect called Fuji. And uh, perhaps you can find, uh, according to each, each detail, detailing of the, the interior space, some uh, Western influence using the geometric curve. And uh, this house was considered one of the first examples of the Japanese uh, very sophisticated avant-garde architecture. Because uh, this architect, who was a professor of the University of Kyoto, uh, tried to apply the system of the ventilation and uh, air conditioning, etc., cetera, uh, combining the, such a kind of the new mode of design, which is half 
OEM, uh, half Occidental and half, uh, can I say, Japanese. And especially, he tried, uh, Fuji tried to interpret the Japanese traditional detail, Japanese tra traditional forms, and he dared to use it inside the house in this way. So for instance, you can see the, the, the use of the materials on the, the ceiling is uh, made, made of uh, bamboo, combined bamboo. And the lighting, uh, he used the paper. Paper is a typical Japanese material inside the house. And so perhaps ma many of you would feel it's very Japanese. But uh, so long as uh, we have studied uh, the Japanese uh, traditional architecture, it's not at all Japanese only uh, although the, the materials are typically Japanese. So, uh, for instance, he used a bit as the, the material for the, the wall, he used used a kind of the paper, which is uh, silver, which are the color of the silver. And that is the inspired by the tea ceremony house of the 16th or 17th century. And the, he used the paper as the, the surface of the, the lamp, but the form of the lamp is quite geometrical, and it's not at all Japanese design. And it's a, a strange combination of oriental and occidental uh, natures. And after the war, this one was uh, the house. The left one is by Hirose, the right one was by uh, RIA. The RIA is a group of architects. And these architecture it's strangely enough to correspond to the, the, the architecture of Fuji, which was shown before. And because uh, this is the, the, the architect tried to make the, a kind of the minimal unit of the space using the, this time is the industrialized, industrialized materials. For instance, you can see the ceilings and also the system of the construction that is a really prefabricated system. And still, the form and the, the continuity of the space refers to the, some traditional design of Japanese house. But the outer aspect is so different. And especially for these uh, houses, the architects try to uh, reject, refuse the wall uh, in order to make the space open. For instance, you can see, according to this uh, plan, Perhaps you can, you can see that some re reference to the plan of the Mies van der Rohe or other uh, European Western architecture. But uh, so long as the construction itself is concerned, still that's the system of the beam and the column is correspond to the, some Japanese architecture. So it is still the mixture of the Japanese and Occidental uh, architecture. And the interior space, so long as the furniture of Japan, uh, history of Japanese furniture is concerned, we have a quite short history of furniture like this. Because uh, in feudal, feudal period, we didn't use the chair or table in this way. The, the only furniture which was kept in, in, inside a, such a feudal uh, Japanese traditional house was the armoire, uh, chestnut. Chest Ch chest, sorry, 
not just that. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, perhaps you can see that the house which is constructed at Fuji, the, the chairs or the tables were introduced, but still the, the scale, the, the dimension of the, the interior space is quite, quite small and short. The, the height is so small. And uh, it's a really strange mixture of the Japanese interior space and the Western style furniture. And I think even this, this uh, furniture, it looks Western one, but uh, the dimension is really reduced to Japanese way. And the typology of this house is concerned, uh, according to Japanese traditional uh, ho housings, the, uh, this house is surrounded by open space or open garden. And in the center, this house is situated in this way. And the, the relation with the nature, that is garden or greens, are quite important. And from the window or, or the, from the, uh, the openings, one can feel and the, the, the nature and the interior space correspond and continues to automatically to the exterior space. Although the, they have to uh, take off the shoes inside the house. Now this one is more clear, clearer. And the left one is a sky house, which is constructed in 1956 by Kikutake. And the right one is a Mori house, which was constructed at the same period by Seike, architect Seike. The right one was the first experiment of the application of aluminum for the, the structure, for the structure of house. For instance, the beams and the, especially the roofing was uh, made of uh, aluminum. And that, that period was still uh, just after the war. So the, because of the shortage of the materials, uh, the Arctic Seike personally had uh, some special relation with the company of aluminum. So he ha had a chance to get it by, with a reduced fare. <laughs> and the, the left one, uh, this is uh, quite uh, another type of this, uh, the house. And that marked the period of metabolism yeah, bec because uh, Kiktake was the pre uh, advocate of newly uh, metabolist group. And this house, still the open space is quite the same as the Seikes or other experimental houses. But uh, the difference, as you know, is that the core, four cores or four supports. And the, these four supports at the four corners of the, the house is the chorus which hide inside the pipings, etc. And each corner of the, each support, it, for, there is, a, for instance, a toilet or a, the bathroom, kitchen, etc. And the, the central space is uh, open and uniform space as it, as it looks like this, in this way. And the point is the house is elevated in, in the air in such a way. And that is a kind of the, how can I say? It's a rejection of the old, and especially after the war, very confused uh, urban organization just around this house. And the, the architects who wanted to make it, uh, the, uh, the house aut autonomous and uh, automatical just on, floating in the air. And uh, such a kind of air correspond to the piloty system of Le Corbusier. But the, so long as Kiktake and other Japanese architects are concerned, it's the system of the, the house and space is more uh, freer and open. It's uh, exterior, uh, and uh, especially the interior should be combined with the, the, the air 
which, which surround the house. And this one is a house of umbrella designed by Shinohara. He is a disciple of Seike and still very active in Japan, like Arata Isozaki or other, uh, other architects of that generation. Uh, and concerning Shinohara, he preferred to be the recurrence to the Japanese traditional, uh, Japanese tradition uh, special special system, like you can say in this way, because the model of this house was a tea house in the 17th century, which is called house tea house of umbrella, and he interpreted this model as uh, in this way, and that took them nearly the same way, and using that system of something like looks like a umbrella. And, uh, And the, also the, the floor is, uh, how can I say, tail, the soil, which was, bat, uh, in French, tail battue, which was a very hard, hard soil, which was used in the Japanese vernacular houses. Oh, sorry. Oh, this is alas, still the sky house of Kikutake. Oh, this is the details of the House of Umbrella by uh, Shinohara. So, st uh, so both are the works of, uh, of Shinohara, Kazuo Shinohara, and especially the, the, the left one, which is called the House in White, uh, because of the, all, all the wall and the roof was painted in this way in white using the plaster. And the, the opening, and he used the Japanese uh, traditional partition called shoji in paper. And the, the, the one edge there is a symbolical column, which is not at all structural. And the, uh, this one was uh, 1960s. And in 10 years later, 10 years later, he came to construct another building which is more conceptual, uh, as it is shown in the right side, which has two columns in this way, which is symbolic as well as uh, structural. And the, the floor, there's no floor, but it is the natural soil. Uh, this is the, uh, how can I say, this is the villa constructed in the mountainous area. and the. The client, who is a poet, wants to live in the nature, and that idea corresponds to the Shinohara's idea, and that the architects realized the house, the villa, in this way, using the natural, natural soil. And he explained, and Shinohara explained this house as the, the expression of the savage architecture or savageness, using some Levi Strauss manifestation. But the still the composition of the house using the soil, for instance, you have seen the, his house using the solid soil, soil which was a uh, house in umbrella. And this one, still they have the, the, the soil, although it is not, not hard enough. And it combines in the, with, the, with this soil, the white plaster, the ceiling and wall. And even the system of the opening is quite the same as the house in white. So Shinohara, he elaborated to the, the houses from the tradition, then towards the more avant-garde or more, uh, how can I say, more savage way of expression. And still, uh, this corresponds to some nature of the, his interpretation of tradition. Now, this is the exterior view of this house. Oh, the interior. <laughs> the, the furniture, so, uh, so long as Shinohara's house in white is concerned, 
he still uh, uses the Javanese traditional based the based table and the stool, which which correspond to some uh, traditional idea. And now, I just I want to explain about the introverted uh, idea of uh, of urban space. Because, uh, for instance, you can see just next uh, to this con concrete house, a typical Japanese townhouse, and still this is uh, this looks like quite banal. And the uh, this concrete house was constructed in 1976 by Toyo Ito. He's one of the uh, advocate of younger generation architects. And he, he is his sister's house. Actually, this is his sister's house. Uh, it's, in some sense, it is, looks like a, a chateau fort, is a fortress of the medieval society, because the, there's no relation between the exterior space and the interior space. The exterior was totally rejected by the, the surface of this beton, uh, of this concrete, reinforced concrete walls. And the only opening is this, this door, the entrance. And 10 years later, again, this, this architect, he preferred to move towards a more open system of architecture, but using the lighter, lighter materials and cheaper materials. Uh, so long as the, his uh, sister's house, Ito's sister's house is concerned, the system of the, the space is like that, the, the, the entrance is like that, and one can penetrate from this small slit into the house. And then uh, there is a, the space like that. And still the, the room is enclosed by the, such, such a huge, uh, huge walls, and the only opening is a slit on the ceiling. To explain his idea, he just used the, the chair of Macintosh, high-back high chair. And the, there is a court, because uh, this, uh, the form of this house is U-shaped, and uh, the, interior, uh, the internal court uh, which is exposed, is uh, in, a, in such a very savage state that it's not at all a Japanese garden. It's rather the, uh, what do I say, very r rough and tough. And the, still the opening, that is the opening of the kitchen, is very, very small. And the architect doesn't want to get the relation from the exterior space, even even in the, the exterior space, the exterior courtyard in this way. And that is the very difference from the architecture of Tadao Ando, who we visit next week here, and uh, Tadao Ando, who prefers the relation, more active relation with the interior space uh, and exterior space according to the Japanese garden model. But in this 1960s, 1970s, is the period of withdrawal from the public open space and Ito Toyor, he decided to choose such a kind of the solution. And still, he again, he wants to, to have some conversation with the exterior space in ten, 10 years later, using the uh, aluminum and uh, other lighter materials. The furniture, which is shown in the, in the right, uh, right side, that is made by Ohashi, the one of the leading Japanese furniture designer. And what is quite interesting, and this is uh, made of plywood, very cheap material. And the cheapness is very important, so long as this uh, Ito Toyo or this Ohashi is concerned. Because the, 
they uh, def characterize, uh, they define the Japanese uh, outer uh, urban settings very cheap and very, very temporary. And that they applied that image even into their own house and own furniture to make everything using the cheap material or sometimes poor material, which some Italian avant-garde prefers to use. And the, the form of the, the chair and the, the table is very simple. And that is the, uh, according to that furniture, furniture designer, is a new interpretation of Macintosh chair with a high back, chair, high back, a ladder back, a ladder back, but a plywood painted in silver in this way. So uh, you can compare the difference of the system of the, the light, lighting and also the, the opening. The, what is it? the le left side is very, very enclosed and some, sometimes the architect refers to this, this scenery, the interior scenery, as the, the what you say, the looking up from the bottom of the, the sea to toward the, the sky. And the other one is more open. I'm sorry that my, my picture is not so well. Perhaps you, you see that some architecture magazines uh, the pictures are very good, but <laughs> I'm a quite amateur of the, the architecture picture, and uh, I didn't fix the appointment. I suddenly visit the house and take pictures. So that is like that way. <laughs> and now, also, uh, I have to mention, uh, to point out the, the notion of the controverted space by uh, uh, another architect, left side, uh, this is Yamamoto, Riken Yamamoto, and this is a house, very specific form. And the right side is a commercial complex by Tadao Ando. It's a video that is a, uh, how can I say, left side, uh, uh, rever reverse. Perhaps uh, next week he will explain his architecture more clearly. <laughs> but uh, the, the point is like that. The, Tadao Andor, uh, he was uh, commissioned to construct a new commercial complex in the heart of Kyoto. Kyoto is a very traditional city, and uh, it, is, it has a very rich tradition. And still, in the heart of the city, the, the buildings is like that. For instance, you can see the very high-rise reinforced concrete building, which has no characters at all. And, uh, the river is a very traditional and very natural uh, resource of this city. But the, the architecture doesn't respect such a kind of natural resource. And Tadao Ando uh, destroyed the old building, which was very high, and make it smaller. And from the commercial point of view, it is quite against the role of the, what do I say, uh, lentil or something like that. And the, First of all, client was objected very much, but uh, Tadao Ando persuaded the, the, the client <laughs> to make it smaller in this way. But finally, he really succeeded to make this building in this. And the, also, the, this complex is ag just against the idea of the public open space. It is, uh, it is public space, but uh, using the small streets, small alleys, or small slits, which correspond to the, uh, the how can I say, Japanese old traditional uh, town, town house uh, system. On the other hand, the left, left side house, which is Yamamoto house, is a, as an outer aspect, is very simple. 
And the interior is a, is a very strange composition. And the idea of this architect is like that, because Yamamoto, who is a, a kind of the anthropologist, and he visited many times the Middle East cities, and he was inspired by the, uh, the idea of the enclosure of the house of the Middle East areas. And he applied such a kind of the analyze into the Japanese house design. And so he make a kind of the void as a core of the building. And in, in this case, down there, there is a unit for the, the I can say, bedroom and the kitchen, etc. And this huge room corresponds to a square inside the house. And this uh, Yamamoto house was made of wood, as you, you can see. And the, the, this internal square was uh, like a, a staircase, huge staircase. And the, the people can uh, exchange their, uh, their views from each point. And on the contrary, uh, Ando, he applied also a very cheap material, is a concrete block, blocks. And this block is a, as a system of construction, is quite easy to construct. Uh, sometimes this was correspond to the, some regional, regional solution of architectural construction. And he really prefers such a small, uh, very uh, narrow staircase or alleys. And just it looks like that this staircase is continuing to the sky. And he artificially want to, uh, want to get rid of the, the image of the outer surrounding buildings, which is so ugly. And Ando proposed to dig the ground until the, nearly the level of the water so that the pedestrian can feel the, the stream of the water and even hear the flow and stream of the water. And uh, for instance, walking in the upstairs for the first floor, he can, the pedestrian can look around the, the alleys or the, the, the people who, who is crossing the bridge. On the second floor, there is a, a small terrace in, inside, which could be interpreted as the, the place for the, the exchange of the, the viewpoint, viewpoints and the eye uh, visions of the people, of the pedestrians. Uh, I think for Ando, the natural element is quite is essential. For instance, the water and the sky. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you uh, see the, his staircase or the slits, it just it looks that it, it is connected direct to the sky without the very ugly view of the, the exterior surrounding buildings. And the, even the Yamamoto's case, that is quite the same. He wants to enclose a kind of the just atmosphere of the outside from the huge window and just in front of the, uh, the house, one can feel the, the greens of the forest which is just before, uh, in front of this house. And this, is, this house is located in the suburbs of Tokyo and which is normally as a very random and very ugly architectural aspect. And uh, Anderson told me uh, last time that uh, this building was, uh, although this was, uh, the volume was reduced, the, uh, the tenant of this building, of this commercial complex, or for instance, Isemiyake or uh, Comte de Garçon, uh, uh, these are the really leading Japanese fashion designers. And the, the, so, so instead, uh, just replacing the old, 
banal uh, fashion designs and he put these uh, high class designs. So that's the reason he really succeeded. And last time, uh, these uh, American millionaires just visited Kyoto. And uh, the millionaires was accompanied with their wives. And if the, uh, the, uh, there was a congress in Kyoto, and uh, this place was selected by these, by these uh, honorary uh, wives of the millionaires, and they uh, set the appointment time at 6 o'clock, for instance, and they gather at 5.30 or something. And 30 minutes makes them to urge to, to make them, to buy really all of the fashions. And the Isemiyake, for instance, the headquarters of the Isemiyake got a call from this Tokyo, uh, Kyoto branch that uh, they have to send another quantity of the, in, in, in a day. <laughs> <laughs> I can't explain very well, but uh, really, the Americans really bought nearly all of the stocks of this, of this house. <laughs> so I think that is one of the successful points of this, of this commercial complex. <laughs> and uh, this uh, left one is also uh, the, by the Yamamoto is a Fuji house. It is also the uh, uh, outskirts of Tokyo, which has uh, the newly developed area. From this side, you can see the, the forest in this way, and this side is a really quantity of row, uh, housing houses in, in a small volume. As a function of this house, uh, this is a dentist clinic. And uh, the, the first floor, the, the upper floor, the dentist lives, dentist house. So to show to these two functions, Yamamoto cho have chosen uh, two materials. The ground floor is the concrete. The first floor is in wood. And the, the, these spaces are separated as he researched in the Middle East tribes. And also he used, he applied the same system as before. The, in the, the middle, in the midst of the first floor, he made, made this place open. And, the, and surra to surround this open space, he set these structures. For instance, this one is a very clear, transparent space. And perhaps you can remember the just, just after post-war experimental houses by Hirose or Okubo, which had been shown there, and that using the, such a transparent system. Here, uh, this is exposed by space, but the staircase, the steps are quite important factors to show the grade of the space. The higher grade is not a social rank, of course, but a, some, sometimes from the exchange of the, the ice, eyesight or something like that, this, this kind of the little difference is quite important. And this uh, box in wood is uh, the bedroom. And as I have, I have mentioned that the Japanese contemporary architecture has, has to some extent had a notion of cheap materials and poor materials, which correspond to some, some, uh, something to the quality of the contemporary Japanese urban settings. And uh, the word, for instance, barracks, it is really uh, important for us. And the uh, cheap materials, for instance, the Itotoyo used the, the slates or the plywoods to, for, as a finish of the, the architecture. Other architects apply the, also very cheap wood or even the, such a kind of the beton arme uh, concrete is very, very easy material in this way. The left one is 
った「ハウス・オブ・スズキ」「ヨジ・スズキ」「And he was inspired I think it's first of all by this Los Angeles call very much and at the same time he many times compared to the、uh, referred many times the Japanese barracks just after the war or just after the earthquake」Well, this is rather American, Californian. <laughs> And this one, the, the right one, is a, a house in Kyodo by architect Yuzuru Tominaga. It doesn't look like an、uh, architect's, architect's design house, but it's a quite vernacular or very ordinary, very cheap. And、uh, even, for instance, if we cross this street, no one would, would、uh, understand that this is the, the work of architects. And still, <laughs> this, is,、uh, this has something very important. The way of living is not so good here. But the, the, you can see the finish of the, the interior materials. The, these are the plywoods. The construction cost of this house is very, very, very low. And here, even here, he used the paper. Perhaps I think it, this is the、uh, new way of interpretation of Japanese、uh, townhouse, which is typical feature of the Japanese urban settings. And the left one is more westernized or Californianized interpretation of Japanese architecture. Also, this is the, the architect's own house, and which was constructed, which was by、uh, wood. And also, the surface is by slate. These are very, very small、uh, cheap materials, poor materials. And realizing this, this architects dare to use these materials. And first of all, the, architects, the architect he decided to move the, the neighboring house. In Japanese wooden houses, it is very easy to move. Using the, the small、uh, ro rolls. One can push or pull the house, and that will be easily removed. <laughs> so he can get the space of the five meters, six meters in this way. So he constructed this house, which is the annex of the, the old house. The architect likes to read very much and drink very much. <laughs> and from the outer aspect,、uh, this house looks like to be a second, second story house. But in reality, this is the third story house. That is the, a kind of the mezzanine, or the,、uh, there's a ground floor, the first floor, and the third. Uh, second floor is hidden in the, in the, in the roof. And perhaps you can't see the hidden, hidden th、uh, second floor room because, according to the Japanese、uh, regulation, building code, it is forbidden to construct a three story house of the wooden structure. But still, the architecture dared to construct that house. Explaining this is the only two story house. And the, the, the st steps to the second floor, there's no step, but the, you can see that the left side, there is a, a bookshelf. That is the steps. <laughs> so that is the question of the interpretation. So there's no steps. <laughs> so the Jardin suspendu, or the suspended garden, or suspended tea house. 
So if we, we go up to this, uh, this uh, floor, this is a very small room, but typical uh, space and volume of the Japanese tea house, if we compare the volume. And uh, there are such a kind of two eyes, or two windows in this way. And uh, 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 this architect was also the disciple of uh, Shinohara. And so, so that's the reason I think he prefers to use the, the same uh, system of the structure, wooden structure, uh, how can I say, the column with the V-shaped uh, members. So this is already a very good uh, tea house, but there's no uh, staircase, so uh, one, uh, the, even the inspector can't blame that this is the house of the three story. This is only the storage or void space above the first floor. So Suzuki, he really, he was a rather, uh, the, he was a very good critic of Japanese architecture. He had a long series of the, on the analyze of Japanese barracks, and, he, and he's at the same time a good photographer. He published a series of the, the photos about the Japanese barracks. And to some extent, this interior space corresponds to the, the, what you say, some instant utilization, use of the, such a wooden structure that is typically the idea of the barracks. And now, uh, I also want to mention that some uh, int introverse idea of the space. And um, this is a house, villa. A uh, house constructed by Ishiyama, one of the most crazy, craziest architect in Japan. <laughs> so he also used a very cheap material, poor materials. But, uh, uh, the colgated pipe, col colgated pipe is uh, one of his favorite material, which, which marks the roof of this building. And the interior is the quite another type of the, the, uh, the interior. And this corresponds to the idea of the, some mystical idea, or the Jap mandara of Buddhist, Buddhist religion. And the, this has a very subtle orientation. And I'm not able to uh, interpret this such a kind of mystical things. But so long as I felt this has, for instance, this uh, facade uh, faces to the, the west. And the, it's not, uh, this is a correspond to the, the, the mandara idea with the, the direction of the, the sunshine. And this pond, this, uh, this bridge is also uh, co correspond to the some mandara bridge and which is not at all functional. Uh, you can see it's very steep. But still, this is entrance. So to enter this house, one has to first uh, to experience this trial. And then if he passes, he can enter this house. <laughs> but uh, just uh, this is uh, located in the mountainous area, not, not in Tokyo. and. Uh, the, so long as uh, this is just in the nature, uh, surrounded by wood and river, neighboring the river, and this uh, as a location is really wonderful. It is not at all uh, Tokyo-like. And the, the architect, he wanted to have the, such a kind of the very uh, separated life with the experience of the light or the experience of the uh, color uh, that correspond to the Mandara world. And when the, as the, the sun moves from east to west, this uh, reflection of the, of the, 
uh, sunshine moves. This is on the white plaster, plaster wall, but it's, it's always, it, there's some reflection of the facade in this way. And down there, this is the, the room, room or the big, not big, but a, but a hall to meet people. And the, the, some, in the middle thing is a, a speaker. And the, this architect, Ishiyama, interpreted this one as a kind of the, some uh, supernatural experience or something like that. And that is a combination of low technology and high technology as well. Low technology is, a, for instance, this corrugated pipe. It's a very, it's a really, really a kind of the notion of barrack, barrack. And the, uh, this, uh, how can I say, speaker, he wanted to refer it to some space uh, metaphor or something like that. And the, uh, such uh, things is a more, uh, uh, thanks to its the effect of the sonorization, he has more mystical experience here. The heating system is by, by, uh, by stove, so long as it is separated from the, the, the urban area. So perhaps we can compare this one, this uh, house, with the, the villa which is constructed by uh, Shinohara. Uh, perhaps you can you, you re <coughs> remember the bare, bare soil, bare soil and the, the wooden structure. In comparison with that uh, villa of Shinohara, this one has more mystical version of the Japanese, Japanese architecture. This mystical version is not at all traditional, although the, some, the interpretation of the mystical world is quite based on the Buddhism, but the use of the material is not at all traditional. It's, it's really avant-garde in that sense. And at the same time, we can compare this one. This was uh, constructed by Arata Isozaki in the western region of Tokyo as a museum of Tadanori Yoko. Tadanori Yoko is uh, one, of the, one of the leading uh, painter and graphic designer in Japan and who was also very influenced by the Indian philosophy. And this museum of Yoko has uh, some meditation room inside. First of all, uh, it's better to explain the form of this, uh, this building. This was interpreted as the image of the, the train because uh, just neighboring to this site, this uh, museum site, there is a Japan National Railway track which is uh, parallel to this building. And once Arata visited this place, just the, the car, uh, the train came and he, that hit the idea or make the building in this way. <coughs> so that is the metaphor, according to Arata Isozaki, metaphor of the train, first of all. But also with the mandara image. At the entrance staircase, And in this building, uh, he, he, he just, uh, can I say scattered, he just put many images of the French or e English Arcadian architecture in the 18th century. And as so long as I feel in this building, that sometimes correspond to the French Enlightenment architecture of the 18th century, especially inspired by the Freemason doctrines. For instance, these are the room for the the land 
and a soil or the air or the water or the fire, something like that. And also there is a pyramid which corresponds to the, the meditation room. And these are the typical uh, 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 image of the f French Freemason architecture in the 18th, cent uh, 18th century. And that was also a kind of mystical doctrine using a more sophisticated technology than the, the left, uh, left alone. And you can see the pyramid. And under this, there is a black granite stone, which is the stone of the, philo philo uh, philo stone of the uh, sorry, meditation. Not yet. Here. Uh, which was inspired by the graphical image of it, uh, Yoko Tadanori the meditator. And once this building was constructed in the really suburban area of Western region, uh, there, the museum curator told me that every day quite curious uh, foreigners, some that must be American or European, I'm not sure, but with a rucksack, with a bare foot, a typical hippie image, still vi visiting this building. And so now this building beca is becoming the one of the point for the pilgrimage for the, uh, the Western and even the Japanese uh, meditators. And uh, this uh, Arata Isozaki's image uh, reminds me of the Hans Hollein's building in uh, Mönchengladbach his museum of uh, underground museum for the contemporary art. Now, this one also had the very typical image of the Freemason or some esoteric notion of the typical European underground ideal. This is a very introverted space as well uh, that uh, corresponds to the <coughs> craziness of the Hans line perhaps. And also, after the, the image of the uh, Ishiyama's house, I also want to show you the some furniture design, designed by Tim Zur. And I think Mr. Mariama will visit this uh, Sayark in a few weeks. And uh, Tim, Tim Zur is, a, is a not a single person. It's, it's a group, but a very loose group. Like, uh, loose means a uh, it's a, uh, in Japan, j there is a gangsters of the motorcyclists. And uh, they have the, how can I say? For instance, in Tokyo, there is a group of the motorcyclist uh, kids who has uh, their own flag with a name on something. And their city, neighboring city of Yokohama, there's another group of motorcycling group. And if they, uh, they, Sympathize. They have the sympathy with another group. They have the kind of the, the how can I say, a brotherhood with other groups. And the Team Zoo is a typical group like that. There are many groups who have the sympathy with each other. And they have, the, under the same flag of Team Zoo, many independent groups are working together or independently. And this atria for the furniture is one of the brotherhood group and which was influenced by the, some leaders like Maliyama, etc. And they designed in this way. And what is common in these groups is their approach, very vernacular style, but also very, uh, sophi uh, not sophisticated, but a very, how can I say, psychological, or can I say, surrealistic approach to the form of the design. This one is like that. This is very, uh, strange, as you see, you can see. And uh, this form was, for instance, was made by the combination of the many vernacular forms. <clears throat> and still, this is very, uh, has a very good reputation. And for instance, if you have some trouble in your back, it's, you, if you sit in this chair, you will, uh, it's a, I don't know how to say, it's a ch Chinese uh, point. 
And this is very good for this one. <laughs> oh, this one as well. And uh, can't you imagine, this is the Salle de Réunion, it's a meeting room of the town hall house in the suburban area of Tokyo. <laughs> it's not the Ku Klux crown. <laughs> and on contrary to this one, so uh, lastly, I w want to introduce uh, the works of the uh, Shinohara Kazuo again. Uh, here's a typical, another opposite image of these, uh, how can I say, very vernacular, surrealistic approach of the architects. Uh, Shinohara applied the way of the more sophisticated or more plain architecture, but still quite light, and still it has a very uh, sensual image of the, the architecture. So because he, what he prefers is the treatment of the surface or the, what do I say, the forms itself, something, etc. And for in this one, he applied a very, uh, how can I say, very ob oblique system. Uh, so sorry, diagonal system in this way. And using the separating color. This is the, the what just say, for reading room. Oh. <coughs> Sorry. So, uh, perhaps uh, what I wanted to tell you is the uh, some s peculiar image of the Japanese architecture, which was, for instance, orient oriented towards the, such a kind of a very strange form, combination of the strange forms. And I think such a combination of strange forms is always uh, de dependent on some, something, sometimes so social aspect, and sometimes for the very psychological aspect of Japanese people. And the, so long as the Japanese society is very, very active, a dense society, the people have a, always a kind of a frustration. And it is very easy, a very understandable if we interpret this architecture and designs into the Freudian or some uh, subconscious an analysis uh, how these forms were made. And uh, especially the case of the Ishiyama is a corrugated pipe. This architecture was, some, someone referred it to the, the image of Jerome Bosch, Hieronymus Bosch, of the Dutch painter, uh, that was on the 16th century, or 14th century, I'm not sure. But uh, this uh, strange image uh, is uh, to always correspond to the some occultic or sometimes some very uh, superstitional and superstitional interpretation of the mystical legend. And Ishiyama, for instance, he he tried to interpret the Japanese and Chinese and Indian mythology using mandara. And the orientation and the, as well as the situation of the, the house is, every part of this house is correspond to such a kind of the inter, uh, myth, myth, mystical interpretation. And so long as it correspond to the, some human desire inside the human body, or the some dream-like vision of a contemporary person. These are new tendencies of Japanese architecture. Has some, something is a backside of the contemporary society. Backside is mean that was uh, created from the bottom, bottom of the subconscious uh, recognition of the world. And others, for instance, 
uh, Toyo Ito or other even Shinohara, they prefer the lighter, sometimes flying image of the, the object. They still continue to the, the lines of the, how can I say, Kikutake, who initiated with the uh, Sky House in 1956. And this, this house, which is separated and elevated from the ground, is very independent and autonomous factor, autonomous act as aspect of the contemporary architecture. And still, it is also very far from the contemporary uh, situation of the Japanese uh, miserable urban settings. And so, uh, as we have seen in these slides, the contemporary uh, <coughs> designs of Japanese architecture, and especially houses, vary so much. The approach of each architect varies also, as you, uh, as, as you were so in this. And also, perhaps you can hear for, from each lectures of this series. And we have to admit one point, that the design quality of such architecture is incomparatively very high, quite higher than the surroundings of settings in the city. Many times, the presence of such architecture in the midst of the junkyard-like Japanese environment, especially Tokyo, surprise, surprises foreign visitors. But the experimental pursuit by these architects is the testimony of the struggle how to join in or confront with such environment. Some have chosen more symbolic approach, other more realistic approach. And at any rate, what is true is that they have not yet solved the fundamental problem of the Japanese city. That is the conflict between the exterior and the interior spaces in general. But I think uh, these, their dynamic and vigorous approach and their very vital idea will surely sh solve one of the solutions uh, which are required to conquer the contemporary situation of design, not only Japan, in all over the world in the 12th, 20th, 20th century. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, if you have some questions, for, I think I'm afraid I can I answer or not. But uh, does anybody have any questions? Uh, which one? Uh, which the the? Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's quite quite small. That is the height of a uh, two me two two meters and fifty. Uh, that is a uh, very small, very small. It's a uh, to sit around the the black granite. Okay, um, next week, as uh, Richie has mentioned, will be Tadeo Ando uh, on Wednesday night at 8 o'clock. Okay, thank you.